Welcome to our tutorial on building invoices in ESC. Now that we have created our invoice, let's start adding items to it. We add items to the invoice on the Invoice tab number 1. Everything we add can be broken into four categories. The first, of course, is parts. Parts are items we use or sell, have a charge, and that we would track quantities for. Next, we have billing codes. These are items or services that have a charge, but we do not track previous costs or quantities. History codes would be items that have no cost or charge associated with them, and the information in the description will be posted to the customer's history record. Lastly, we have assemblies. An assembly is a grouping of items. This can be any combination of parts, billing codes, or history codes. To add an inventory item or part, we would select the warehouse the part is coming from. In the item field, we can start to type the inventory number. ESC will start to filter and will, in blue, fill in the rest of the part name based on which part most closely resembles what you are typing. If it is, just hit Tab. If not, continue to enter characters until you get the part you want to add. If you do not know the part number, you can always hit the down arrow in this field. This will bring up the search box and you can look for the part here. If this item is a serial part, after entering the part number, a pop-up will appear with all of the serial numbers that you have in your warehouse and allow you to select the one you are using on this invoice. If the list does not contain your serial number, you either did not receive that serial number into that warehouse, or if you did receive it, your receiving date is later than your invoice date. If you have flat rate items set up in ESC, and you choose one of those items on this invoice, the flat rate column will appear. Here, you click on the down arrow and select the type of flat rate you are performing. Once the part is selected, the fields next to it will populate. You can edit any of these fields other than the cost or extended cost. You can also select to remove or add tax from this item, or hide this line from the printed invoice you send to the customer. Adding a billing code is almost identical to the inventory item. The difference is, when you go down to the item search, you have to hit the drop-down arrow on the type field and select billing. Some billing code types allow you to edit the cost field. Billing codes can also affect other items on the invoice rather than adding to the price of the invoice. Discounts would be one of those. We have a billing code type of discount. This will pop up a box that asks for a discount rate. When entered, this will apply that discount rate to all items above this billing code. This is important to remember because sometimes we may want to give a discount on just materials, but not labor. We would have all of the materials entered together, and then by applying the discount rate before the labor billing code, you only have it affect the above lines. Someone may want to know how to have a discount apply an amount and not a percentage. This would be done by making a billing code that is a type of other, and then when using it on the invoice, enter a negative number for the discount. Getting a subtotal on an invoice is as easy as adding a pre-made billing code, sub, to the invoice. This will add up all items above and give you a total. With these billing codes, you may find the need to insert a line or delete a line to your invoice. To do so, click on a line at the warehouse and hit the insert key on your keyboard to add a blank line above the one you are on or hit the delete key to subtract the line that you are on. The labor type of billing code will get the labor rate from the location tab of the customer. It will bring that labor rate over and place the charge on the invoice as a price. This is not the labor cost, which will come from tab number two on the invoice. Assemblies are added to an invoice just like any other item, but when selected, you will see the parts that make up the assembly listed below the assembly item. These sub-items are not marked to print. Lastly, we have history codes. Again, the method is the same in adding them. One thing to remember is, if you have a billing code or a history code and print out the invoice, you will not see the item code for these on the invoice. You will only see the description. If you have a list of parts on a purchase order, you can import all of them to your invoice in one shot. If the parts were ordered on a purchase order from the dispatch, the parts on the purchase order must be received. If they have been, they would be in the activities, Import items received to a job or dispatch feature. If they have been ordered on a purchase order but have not been received, you can go to Activities, Import Purchase Order. This will provide you with a search screen where you can select the purchase order and import the parts. Be aware that you could import parts more than one time, so make sure you are importing parts just for this invoice. After we have added all of the items to this invoice, the last thing we would need to do is tender a payment to the invoice. This can be done by selecting the Tender button on the top of the invoice, or the Tendered word, underlined in blue, 
near the bottom of the invoice. You can only select this if the invoice has charges on it. The pop-up allows you to enter the information about the payment and save it. The last part of the invoice I want to cover is in the lower left. This is the Hold checkbox. This is a great way to hold an invoice until you are ready to send it to a customer. With this selected, you will be able to easily filter invoices that still need to be reviewed or if more items may need to be added. While on hold, this invoice will not affect any of your sales records. Using these methods will help your invoices have more meaning, allow you to more accurately track costs, and provide your customer with better service, which of course should translate to more and better sales revenue. This concludes our tutorial on building your invoice.